Hello everybody, it's DLabs and welcome to my channel and I'm here to review Aliens 3 and I'm also going to do a little bit of a backstory as well. Also, Redneck Gamer is also doing a second opinion so don't forget to check that out at the end of the video. Well, I guess it all started back in 1986 when James Cameron directed the smash hit Aliens. It grossed $131 million. It was number one at the North American box office for four consecutive weeks. Aliens was the seventh highest grossing film of 1986 in North America. Also, Aliens was nominated for seven Academy Awards, winning on both sound effects editing and visual effects. After the success of Aliens, 20th Century Fox wanted to move forward with Aliens 3. So they approached producer David Giller and Walter Hill to start working on a script. They came up with a two-part treatment involving the Whaling Corporation making biological weapons from the aliens, where Michael Bean's character, Hicks, he's the main protagonist, Ripley's in a coma, she doesn't wake up until the fourth film, and that's where it has the big final epic battle that's supposed to end the franchise. In 1987, Giller and Hill approached cyberpunk author William Gibson to write the script for the third film. Gibson drew heavily from Giller and Hill's treatment. His script was very action-oriented and featured an extended cast. But the producers were unsatisfied with the screenplay, which Geller described as perfectly executed script that wasn't all that interesting. The producers liked certain elements of Gibson's script, but ultimately, Gibson would leave the project. So producers Hill and Geller hired writer David Twahey. His version of the script was radically different than Gibson, he also changed the setting from Earth to a prison planet where they do experiments on the prisoners. But when David's script was delivered to Fox President Joe Roth, he did not like the idea of Ripley being removed, declaring that Shigourney Weaver is the centerpiece of the series and Ripley was really the only female warrior in our movie mythology. Sigourney Weaver is an actress who has carved out a place for herself in a number of different types of movies. Comedy with Ghostbusters and Working Mist. But she's probably best known as the action-adventure hero in the Alien movies. In the early 90s, director Vincent Ward was hired to direct Aliens 3. But he wanted to rewrite David Twahey's script. Ward's version of the script involved a wooden planet ruled by monks. When the monks looked up into the sky, they saw the Star of the East, but it was actually Ripley's escape pod. When it crashes into the planet, the monks end up rescuing her. But they are very religious, believing that Ripley's crash is actually a good omen. But with the increased suggestion of the alien presence, the monks start to believe that it's some type of religious trial caused by sexual temptation, and they believe the alien is the devil. Based on this version of the script, Fox greenlit the project and started production. With the sets being built and the script being fine-tuned, eventually Fox asked a meeting with the director, imposing a list of changes to be made. Refusing to do so, Ward was fired. Producers Hill and Geller, not 100% satisfied with the script, decided to rewrite it themselves, taking all the good elements from all the previous scripts that were written. Now all they needed was to find a new director. Then they brought Fincher on as a, as a new director. David Fincher was, and we were, he was incredibly impressive. One Comes them. from music videos as well as uh, some magnificent commercials. And Shigourney Weaver was very happy that the talented director was hired. I finally said toward the end of the meeting, so how do you, how do you picture Ripley in this movie? And he said, I don't know, bald? <laughs> and that was the moment where I fell in love with him. Because they were so far in the production of Aliens 3, David Fincher found it very difficult to direct the film. We had built the sets for the uh, Vincent Ward script. Uh, with the script. I think the biggest problem David had was that we never had a concrete draft of the script to go by. Not only was 20th Century Fox losing faith in the young director, they also had a few of their own problems to deal with. When she said she saw my character, Hicks, made up of like a dummy character yeah. there, and I said, Ed, 
What the fuck, man? I mean, it's one thing not to be in it. It's another thing for me to have had fucking that alien come back in me and have it come out of my chest. I don't care how much money you have, that alien is not coming out of my chest, okay? And uh, I wanted to use my photograph. I said, now you can pay me. <laughs> but director David Fincher didn't find the situation so amusing. Being over budget, having a hectic work schedule, and 20th Century Fox sending notes and suggestions to change the movie, he was very verbal about his frustration on the set. It's amazing that Fox is the number one studio in the country because they're all such a bunch of morons. But also the cast and crew were well aware of the troubled production. Saturday I was probably coming back and then yesterday I heard they, they got finished with this movie and that's the game. I want to see how they're going to do it. Because the production was so crazy, the cast and crew came up with a funny nickname for the set. Everyone's waiting for me and I see Sigourney and she looks at me and she goes, Welcome to the rat's nest. And you know, I said, oh. Eventually, 20th Century Fox requested David Fincher to take all the footage he filmed and edit the film together so the executives could see it. The executives at Fox were given a three hour cut version of Aliens 3 and they weren't impressed by what they saw. We had to stop. We didn't wrap up the film. We stopped shooting. Fox ended up recutting and re-editing the film for theatrical release. And by doing this, left some pretty interesting plot holes. He's meant to release this monster, team up with the thing, and go and kill Ripley. Fantastic. I've had friends say, in fact, we saw you in one scene, and then you kind of disappear. You know, nobody knows quite where you should. Even with all the rumored production problems that were going around, the movie was still successful in theaters. David Fincher, on the other hand, disowned the film and wants nothing to do with it. Okay everybody, well that's my documentary before the review. Hope you all liked it. I won't be doing this for all movies, just certain movies that I feel deserve special attention. Now let's start the reviews. I've probably seen Alien 3 like a thousand times, and I would have to say right off the bat they fuck it up. By killing off Newt, Hicks, and Bishop, it's basically the biggest slap in the face you can do to the fans of the first sequel who grew to love those characters. And I'm not saying that Newt, Hicks, and Bishop had to be in the entire third film. They could have been killed off during the movie and it would have been more gut-wrenching to see because you have more of an emotional attachment to them. And because basically these characters are thrown away right at the beginning, you already kind of have a bummer feeling about the movie when it starts. You kind of feel like how Ripley feels in the movie. Depressed, tired, confused. And that's not a good thing to feel once the movie first starts. That's something that should happen in the middle or at the end of the movie. Another small problem I have with this movie is that it takes itself way too seriously. There isn't a comedy relief or a funny moment throughout the whole thing. James Cameron's Aliens has better pacing because it adds these comedy moments, which is a really good idea because it breaks up those boring moments in the film. And it kind of wakes you up a little bit so you pay a bit more attention. But in Alien 3, everybody's so serious, it's like a soap opera. Now keep in mind, I watched the assembly cut of this movie, which is like a half an hour longer, so that's maybe why it felt like it kind of dragged on a bit. And in this version, there's a scene where they actually trap the alien for like 20 minutes. And I feel like that's really a bad idea. Because by doing that, you kind of take away all its power. You almost have no more fear for it. And how the alien escapes from that situation is kind of ridiculous and really stupid. Now what I did like about this movie was the acting. All the actors do a good job. But if you notice that at least 5 or 6 of the characters are exactly the same. Like a majority of the convicts have this kind of I don't give a fuck attitude and fuck everybody and I'm going to rape everything. And you'll know exactly what characters I'm talking about because they're the first ones to die. I think that Shkoyne Weaver is so fucking good in this movie. She displays a range of emotions from I'm really sad to my life fucking blows. And it's very impressive. I always liked her acting. I don't like that little love story that's in the movie. I feel like it's too slow. But still, what can you do? The sound stages or the environments in this are really crazy. They look nice and they're huge. 
and the practical effects in this are nice and gory and realistic and raw, and I like that. Especially in the assembly cut where they fixed the CGI alien. Overall, I wish they made this more like James Cameron's Aliens. Because throughout the whole movie, you don't really like any of the characters because they're not very likable. And the ending CGI looks a little err, but also Ripley's sacrifice doesn't feel nearly as impactful because she's going to die anyway. So overall, I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. It's not the best aliens. There are better, but this is definitely good to watch. It's like, it's good for the lore of the alien. Also, as I said earlier, my good buddy Redneck's here. Hey, Redneck, can you please take it away? Howdy, folks. Redneck Gamer here. And I've been asked by D-Labs to give my opinions on Alien 3. So, here it is. I'm gonna probably get some weird looks from y'all viewers out there, but I have to say this. I like Alien 3. I know, I know, I have weird tastes. Let me at least explain why I like this film. I find that a lot of people are quick to hate this movie because it was not like the second movie that and a few other things. And mind you, Alien 2 was a very good exception to the rule of sequels to movies not being as good as their predecessors. A few other good exceptions were Terminator 2 and Beethoven 2, both better than the first films in their respected franchises. In other words, Alien 2 was the best in the series, and before you ask, yes, Alien 2 is my favorite in the Alien franchise. But in saying that, it should be known that Alien 2 was going to be a hard act for the next Alien film to follow. But does that make Alien 3 bad? In my opinion, no. Granted, it has its fair share of problems, such as the killing off of the characters Hicks and Newt. Like, really? But I am one of the very few that was able to overlook some of these flaws and take the film for what it was worth. A lot of folks dislike Alien 3 because it takes a different direction than Alien 2 did. Alien 2 was a non-stop sci-fi action thriller, whilst Alien 3 decided to go back to the more horror-inspired suspense sci-fi thriller that was seen in Alien 1. In other words, Alien 3 went back to its roots. And I think that was a good idea on the writers, directors, and producers' end to put that back in the series. Alien 3 also borrowed some elements from the cyberpunk subgenre of sci-fi. The gloomy feel of the movie, the setting of the prison, plus the religious society that was built in said prison. It was a darker toned movie. Hell, even the ending was pretty dark. I happen to be a huge fan of the cyberpunk subgenre, so this film just speaks to me. The film does have its fair share of issues, though. And I wouldn't be a good critic if I didn't address them. For instance, there's the absence of Newt and Hicks. And yeah, even I, a person who likes this movie, has to admit, that's a problem. Newt and Hicks were well-written characters. Hicks played the main male hero, as well as the potential love interest for Ripley, whilst Newt played the adopted daughter role for Ripley. Having these two characters gone hurts the film a bit. A lot of people liked these characters, myself included. They were kinda like Ripley's new family. Either the creators of Alien 3 didn't like Newton Hicks, or they were very adamant on going in a new direction with the film in general. I tend to think it was more of the latter, obviously. Bishop shows up, but only for a couple minutes, and he was another character that me and a lot of other people liked. It should be known this movie is a full-on Ripley experience, and that's because this was supposed to be her last rodeo, her true final battle, if you will. And you can tell just by looking at her, she's bruised, she's battered, and she's exhausted. But the Xenomorphs, or Xenomorph in this movie's case, is still wreaking havoc and it must be stopped. Speaking of the Xenomorph, this one is a little different than the one that was seen in the previous films. They call this particular Xenomorph a runner. Why is it called a runner? Well, because this Xenomorph was spawned not from a human this time, but rather a dog. This has made the Xenomorph in Alien 3 quadrupedal and thus faster. Thus the name. 
Anyway, in conclusion, I would have to give this film a G for good. I think it's passable, as passable as a sequel could go, but yeah. And hey, it could have been worse. It could have been this film. Ugh. Thank you very much, Redneck, for your help. And if you enjoy Redneck's review, you can check out in the description, you'll find a link to his channel. This review and documentary style video is actually my second one. My first one is Batman, but I'm waiting on another YouTuber named Lee Christian to do the music and a second review on Batman. And please, his link is in the description as well. He's a wicked musician. He has a band called Smilex. Also, he loves Prince, and he has lots of Prince videos. So, there you go. That's what we think of Aliens. I honestly think the tone of the movie is too serious. Even though some of the characters act funny, this movie is very humorless. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Have yourself a great night. Subscribe if you're new. Comment. Thumbs up. Cheers.